This game on Sunday has a lot of significance. Not only is this a chance for West Ham to gain some traction in the European race, but it also means that we can go nine points clear of the opponent's Everton. Please, West Ham, and it's not that you've done it this season, but please, please do not mess this up for me, and please make my Sunday happy by beating one of our bogey teams in Everton. Okay? So yeah, as you can probably tell by now, West Ham United are hosting Everton at the London Stadium this Sunday. The game has big significance because both teams are chasing European football. West Ham are in with more of a shout given their league position. West Ham are now 5th in the table, Everton at 8th. Everton can still mathematically get a European place, but a win for West Ham Sunday would really dent Everton's hopes of qualifying for Europe. And that would be a blow for Everton, given their manager and the squad. But I'm a West Ham fan. We have to talk about West Ham and think about what our own club wants. And we want to get into Europe. So this game is very, very important. If we win this, we have it easier for the last three games. Everton definitely have a good future, not just with Carlo Ancelotti as manager, but I'm talking about the club as a whole. It's got owners that are ambitious, it's moving to a new stadium, and it's got a team full of a lot of talent. A lot of South American talent too as well. They have a lot of players from Brazil, a few from Colombia as well. And you probably know who I'm talking about when I say Colombians. A certain player who shares my name, Harmes Rodriguez, well, James He's not playing on Sunday, though, because he's injured. But anyway, Everton did start off the season very well, and for three weeks they were top of the league. However, the recent form has not been so good. One win in the last eight, and they struggle to score at home. They struggle to win at home. Their only one win in that time was the 1-0 away win at Arsenal, where Burnt Leno spilt the ball through his own legs. Um, that was a small confidence boost for them, but their form within the last nine games or so, it's been concerning. Everton have gone from being top four contenders at the start of the season to now fighting for the Europa League. And they may not even get Europa League at this stage. It is still a work in progress with the team and Ancelotti is praising his players a lot and getting confidence in them. But they still have quite some way to go if they want to be regular European contenders on a consistent season-by-season -season basis. I mentioned that James Rodriguez isn't playing at the weekend, but another midfielder is Abdoulaye Ducore, who's arguably Everton's best midfielder because of his pace and box-to-box -box style of play. He's one of the reasons why I think we need to get Declan Rice back for this Everton game, because we need somebody who can cut out that movement in the middle, the ones that Decore creates, the chance-wise. And the thing with Decore is he's one player that Ancelotti really likes because of Decore's intelligence and tactical awareness and the fact that he can also play in so many different positions. He's gone as defensive midfielder, holding midfielder, central midfielder, even playing in a semi-centre-back role. So Decore's versatility... And ability to adapt to different positions make him quite a competent player and a player that any team would love to have because he can play so many roles and change instantly. From my own point of view, there are two hometown heroes on the Everton team. There's Mason Holgate, who's from Doncaster, which is where I was born and raised. And there's also another lad, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who's from Sheffield. Calvert-Lewin is another player that Ancelotti really rates and says that he can go all the way to the Euros, and I think so too. Calvert-Lewin's had a really good season. He's got 15 goals in 28 appearances, one player of the month in September 2020, and got some England call-ups as well. So he's a rising star in the England team, and he's only 23 years old, so he can only get better from here onwards. He's actually a player that every manager he's worked under has loved. Nigel Clough used to my Sheffield United. Managed Calvert-Lewin. Club said Calvert-Lewin was a good player then. Ancelotti is now saying it. Richarlison is a player that I have to mention because he seems like a really cool guy for a start with his, uh, you know, celebration with the pigeon. And just the fact that he, 
you know, he's just he just seems a really cool guy, basically. But that aside, as the footballer, Richarlison is excellent. He's their best striker alongside Calvert Lewin. Those two have formed up a really good partnership. While Calvert Lewin has the aerial ability, Richarlison has the flair, the Brazilian samba flair that led to him getting called up to the 2019 Copper America and winning it on home soil, even scoring in the Copper America final. He's actually got Everton to thank for helping him to improve his career, not only as a person, but to help him get recognised for the national team. And I've seen his social media. He's really proud to be Brazilian and really proud to play for his country. And just that way that the club has helped him to grow is why he goes in this section. Blast from the past, the West Ham streets will never forget Ena Valencia. I certainly don't. He joined West Ham from Pachuca, a Mexican team, following the 2014 World Cup. He scored a wonderful volley against Hull City and had a brace against Manchester City in the last season at the bowling ground. I remember those two correctly very well because I was watching both games. And he's a player that's always... He's always been in my mind, Ena Valencia, mainly because of those goals and also just because he had a bit of a good partnership with Diafrasaco. Ena Valencia started to fall out of favour in the 2016-17 season and was loaned out to Everton. After he left Everton, he left West Ham and England altogether, moved back to Mexico to join Tigres. He now plays for Fenerbahce in the Turkish Super League. Everton's a team that we do struggle against, but in recent seasons it's been quite unpredictable. I remember when Lukaku was always scoring against us. Uh, He's not there anymore. Um, For my score prediction, I'm going to say 2-1 West Ham. I will say Antonio and Lingard to score in the game as well. Thank you very much for watching Opposition Uncovered. If you like the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Of course, I'll be watching the game on Sunday morning, well, my time, and I'll be doing the aftermath of the game following the result. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Oh, and Newcastle, by the way, please do us a favour and beat Leicester. (laughs) 